doing a 30 minute session for a client. I'm going to read these goals here and get tuned in. There's a really awesome story involved. Okay, so here we go. All right. Hi, Abby. Last spring was the culmination of a very dark period for me on every level of my being. It landed me in the hospital for over a month septic with MRCA. They said if I'd waited even another day before asking for help, I would have died. I had open heart surgery to re replace my aortic valve that was ruined by the MRCA. After recovering from that surgery, my body rejected the wires used to hold my sternum together. After the surgery to remove one of the wires, my heart stopped and I had a near-death experience. I'm still physically going through medical stuff, but that's also afforded me time to figure some things out. I've been told that I have been given the opportunity for a clean slate, but I would have to choose it. At first, I thought it was just about my work situation. I'm 50 now and have worked with spirit and healing energies in one way or another most of my life, but I really pulled away from it the last five to eight years. As I've sat with this idea of a clean slate, I realized I wanted to work with energy healing again. I started a course learning optimal EFT, then I found love inspiration, and they've brought through some beautiful new Reiki frequencies, so I have been working with those attunements and meditating every day. It came during meditation that I had reincarnated in my own body. That is so awesome. That's happening for a lot of people right now. All right, hence the offer of a clean slate and blueprint and why I'd have to choose to close the door on my past life as yourself. Your previous self as yourself. Got to move on and now you're a new you. Okay, so I have chosen to close the door and have been figuring out how to do it. I sat down and asked my guardian angel, Hectel. I've never heard of, um, I'm, that, that's awesome. I'm, I'm, this is new to me, Hectel, okay. Is, that must be a real like angel or did, that, did you receive that name? I, I'm like so into this, okay. So I, I asked my guardian angel, Hectel, not just for help, but for a direct message I was prepared to write down. I got Metatron Milky Way, which is how I found you, Abby. I was searching the internet for Metatron. A few days ago, I had another amazing experience. I tried to type it all out before, but it was gone when I tried to pay. <laughs> I had been worried I was prattling on too long. Ha! Short version. I was meditating over a three to four hour period with several frequencies of Reiki, and I released my old self in a light bubble. And Kalima, her tiger, and Archangel Michael helped me to do some house cleaning. I've never felt anything like it. So now I'd like your help to confirm that I've closed the door in my past life and have fully embraced this new life. Or if it's not closed, would you help me close it? And then see if I need help integrating my new blueprint and the new energies and frequencies and help me with that if, if I do. And finally, any guidance you get for next steps. I know another, I know one way or another I am to be of service as a light worker and I'm anxious and excited but I also know I had a fair bit of cleanup to do first. <laughs> okay. Wow, thank you for sharing your story. It's a really great story. It's amazing how one thing leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, leads to another, and now you're reborn. <laughs> it's like, wow, what a weird series of events. And look at me now, you know, one year later, looking back, oh my gosh, what a crazy series of events. Okay. It's really good stuff. <sighs> okay, I'm, I'm really excited. I'm going to go ahead and relax here and get started. Thank you for everything that you shared. Thank you for being open to sharing your session with others. Okay. Okay. This is really interesting. I have to wait for a moment because I'm as I as I'm entering into your energy field, it's like um, there's just a lot of heaviness right now, and I feel just all around myself just saturated in a heaviness. That's not necessarily a bad thing, but I'm just being pulled down, and it just gets a little jarring in my throat.
Oh my goodness. So there's a lot to talk about here. And the first thing that I need to do is take a look at your, what I would define as physical health or something more tuned into the human body. But I want to tell you the image that I saw when I first stepped into your energy field. It was like a gorgeous, massive gemstone. It was made out of really vibrant rainbow colors, like really super vibrant, particularly green and red, orange, blue, purple. Um, and then it had these sort of white um, in between, but it feel, felt like it, it um, was a reflection of rainbow and it was like a gemstone and um, it's kind of like a flat piece that some people have the worry stone and it's kind of a flat piece. It was like a flat um, piece. It wasn't perfectly oval. It'd be more like rectangular with rounded edges and it sort of made it up your being. Now, <laughs> now around this stone, there's this burnt material. It just, it was like a metallic bubbling just around the edges and it's like a really dark grayish brown color and it had this like bubblings to it almost look like metal that you it bubbles sometimes in places it looks like that and that's when all the heaviness um just started to pull me down and there's just so much your energy field is wanting to talk about so much <sighs> So there is like a lot of excitement here. It's so exciting that I'm, I'm actually going to have to quiet it down so I can hear what's underneath the surface of all the excitement. Because you're not just excited. You're a lot of things. So we know you're excited. Okay. That's a very loud sound. It's pretty wonderful. So, but I'm going to put that over there so that I can hear all the other sounds. Yeah, you're just, it's like, you know what? I'm ready. I'm moving on. I'm moving on. So that's great, but there's some kind of closure. There's some kind of um, balanced closure. That's the only way I could define it. Because the intention of moving on, yes, I am ready to move on. Therefore, I have moved on, is extremely effective and powerful and it works. But sometimes there's these loose ends that just, it needs to be, like you need to just sit with those loose end energies and just give them a chance. Just say, I acknowledge you, I experience you, thank you. And then, and then it's time to let them, them go in, in, a, in a different way than just saying, see you later, not, um, I'm in my new life now. Um, you're doing everything right, but there's some loose ends is how I put it. <laughs> just some, some things to balance out here. You're just, <laughs> all right, this is just yet another, another wave of the excitement and the joy and you're, you've already moved on and it's another wave of the same. Okay. So again, um, I'm pretty excited in it about it. I'm like riding the wave with you. It's really fun. Um, but I'm, I'm taking that energy and just setting it over there. So again, I can neutralize a little bit of you and then I could hear some of the other parts. Because it's like you've already moved on, but you also haven't. You have a major part of you that hasn't yet. But then you have a major part of you that has. <laughs> so I'm still figuring this out. The more dense human side has not. The more etheric spirit side has. So we got to bring both of you together. And we got to do it as in, in more of a oneness so you got to take your body with you into the next life. <laughs> um, even though we're talking about the same life, the same body, but I've reincarnated. I've gotten to live my like twice in this form with this identity. You know, that's so cool. But there's something about the body has to, has to be, it has to be your new body now too kind of thing. What's interesting is, all right, so many interesting things. 
and I, I, I can only go so fast because as I get to the next layer, another wave of excitement, I moved on. Like, okay, cool. Another wave of excitement, I moved on. Okay, great. <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it. Still trying to just calm that down so I can get to what is the vulnerabilities here. And the interesting thing is, is I feel a lot of energetic um, pulsing in your sacral chakra and your root chakra, in your third eye and in your crown, like, but very much so in sacral and root, like an energetic pulsing and it's got presence, it's got depth and density, it, it's got um, I'm here type, it's not hiding from me, it's very accessible. It's louder in the lower chakras than it is in the upper ones, but primarily the lower two and the upper two. And there's something about these lower two chakras that are very pleasant for me to gravitate towards. This is getting away from the physical body. It's more like an etheric body. It's not quite... I mean, there's still density to it, so it's pretty darn close to the physical body. But I feel slightly out of the physical body now. Just like a, an energetic skin layer, you could de describe it as. There's a lot of conversation in your sacral chakra. Like a lot of animated talk. It seems very positive. I mean, I'm being introduced to it right now. There's lots of rainbow colors coming through here too. This is not typical like I do not typically go into a sacral chakra that has this much rainbow energy in it and just being in here it's making my nose itch um so I don't know why that happens but every now and then my nose will itch and it's usually very intense energy you are communicating with your Throat, you're communicating with other chakras here. Not particularly third eye and crown at this time, but you're showing me throat, heart, solar plexus. I mean, you're just like... <laughs> you're like telling me all this stuff, but my human mind's just like... The, the most I can get is that you're very active, very animated, very colorful, very bright, very excited... And you're doing some rebalancing of throat, heart, and solar plexus. But there's also third eye and crown chakra work going on here. But you're really solid in the lower chakras, which is most people aren't. <laughs> it's very unusual. I, I'm going to have to just time it out. That doesn't mean that this isn't still existing, but I got to time all this out. Because I, I literally have got to give um, an honor, like your body deserves my attention too. Like your, these other factors that I am sensing deserve my attention too. The excitement is like 99%, but 99%, like you need, but still you have a body, you still have all these other aspects that are also 99% and completely pushed under the rug of sound. Like you just like, I would already let go of them but you haven't fully transmuted it yet. Like you haven't come to peace with like it. They weren't put in the grave and then the, the ceremony took place. There's something missing here. You're not taking the body with you kind of thing. I mean, you aren't kidding when you say you are reborn. Your energy field is actually like your, all your energy consciousness inside yourself is actually brand new like talking like brand new I mean and it's very legit it's very authentic it is literally I've never seen it to such a degree where it was it was this I mean to this level I mean you're full of color you're everywhere but it is an odd s sensation that we need to do there's a missing step here I'm still trying to get to it because I have to keep calming your energy field down. That's not going to uh, change anything. You're still going to be excited, but I have to do this because I got to get to what isn't done yet. It's also going to help you feel calmer and more tuned into yourself because you're very tuned into the event.
Still working on chakras. I ask you what you think about your physical body. You're really work you're really connected with the spirit realm, but you're not connected with your physical body. So that's fine because you can transmute, like you can bring energy from the spirit realm into your physical body, but you also have to be in your physical body as well. It's kind of surreal because your your lower two chakras are really like loud. So you are in your body, but you're also not. You're not choosing this body. That's why you were trying to, that's why your body was shutting down. That's why you're trying to go through that death process. You were not choosing this physical body. You were actually choosing to be reborn, but there's a bit of a um, a discussion here about whether you would be reborn with a new body or if you would just continue with this one. Believe it or not, there's still con conversation about you not continuing with this one, okay? That's very different, but I'm just going to say that. Um, let's just see what comes next, okay? That's why you're not fully in your body. That's why you're make you're doing all of these ex exciting things. So I need you to say that I choose this body. I mean that that is literally all you have to do because this body isn't going to go in the grave. We're not done with this body yet. So you have to make sure that you're stating this, that I'm choosing this body, because that's lacking in your energy. You're choosing everything but this body. <laughs> You have to choose this body. But even when I say that, you do have aspects of your inner self that are just like, I don't know, maybe I am done with this body. <laughs> that's why all the near-death experiences, that's why all this happened, because you were already choosing to be reborn. You're already choosing to... Um, you did it, so you're ready to do, do the next thing with a new body. But you... <laughs> This is so surreal, but you said, no, 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 I'm going to be reborn. I'm not dying yet, <laughs> but yet now you are being reborn, but you aren't choosing this body. You know what's crazy about this? There's like um, other lifetimes where you could, you could choose. I'm seeing what is, I don't know that it necessarily looked exactly like this, but the idea is here. Where you could take your soul out from one body and put it into another by your choice. So, um, and I'm not convinced you're not out of that lifetime yet. Um, so it seems like you've been in a very long lifetime experience with this one soul. And you're working with people or other souls that would be alien people, alien, you know, galactic beings that have figured out how to move the soul consciousness from one body to another body to another body to another body to another body. So you never actually die. You just choose another body. So you just take the soul out and put it into another body and you've been doing this. Like I, there's some kind of lifetime where this, and it feels like it still exists. It's still happening. It could be trillion years old, you know? Like I don't know how how old it is, but I'm just seeing like, what is like rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and rows and rows of mannequins, but they're actual forms. They're forms that you can um, take. I don't know how that procedure or that process works, but you're doing that here. You're doing that right now. You're already reborn, so you have to choose this body because you're wanting to, there's a, a clash here between you kind of basically preparing yourself to be this soul moved into another body of your choice. And it's already adult form. It's not starting with the baby um, and going through the youth and all that. So you have a soul part of yourself out there that goes from one body to another body so that you can experience a controlled reincarnation, you could define it. It's controlled reincarnation. So in the conscious incarnate state you choose the body you choose male female and we're talking alien bodies here not they're not the same race it's not like humans choosing humans we're talking like um a human choosing a blue avion or an arcturian body or a, you know it's like it's but it's vast it's vast it's like so many races you couldn't even imagine 
and you could make these, um, like, uh, like a test tube, like you could, um, I keep seeing more and more of this, this life because it feels like it still exists. It feels like a part of you is still going through this process and is not choosing to move on from that. It's a controlled reincarnation is, is what I would define it. This is something where this, this is somehow not the same as that. Our version of reincarnation is not this does not have the same vibration as that. It's incarnating by choice. And it's very biological. It's very um, scientific. Um, but it's also psychological because it's intriguing to be in the different bodies. Like it's intriguing, but you're the same consciousness. Now you have that overlay. Is that what the Milky Way or the galaxy was all about? You had a, a Metatron and then the galaxy? Like, this is an outer space thing. Like, this is an out of this world thing. You're somehow paralleling that with this life. So you're already reborn, but you have to say I'm choosing the same body. Because even when I say that, you're just like... I don't know why, but it, I keep looking at soup that gotten rotten. And I have to eat that rotten soup. And I'm really dis dis disgruntled about this. You could almost imagine it like a kid still sitting at the dinner table having to eat broccoli. It's like, I'm never going to leave the dinner table. I, I will not eat the broccoli. Why are you doing this to me? An hour goes by. Ugh, I'm still at the dinner table. So... I keep getting images like this. About you saying I choose this body. But me talking about it is already what you need. You're already you're already starting to settle in with this body. I'm surprised that you didn't um, didn't die just from what I'm connecting to. But I don't feel that lingering now. Yeah, you're 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 listening. You're a very good listener. You're thinking. You are such a busybody, man. You're passionate. You're ambitious. You're full of ideas. You're excited. You wanted to be reborn in an adult body. That's why you didn't want to die and then start over from infant. You wanted to be reborn in an adult body. So you're going to have to choose the body that you're in. Because there's some weird parallel with another time that you, it feels like you're still in where you're able to choose a different body you're not this time with this we aren't there yet you need to embrace your heart you need to embrace your blood you need to embrace your bones you need to embrace your skin your eyeballs you need to embrace your hips, your toes, your hands. You got to embrace your body. You got to feel a present in your body. This is this is exhausting. We're getting there. We're doing it. This is exhausting. Uh, there's there's some human elements that are kind of complaining a bit just because they're scared. <laughs> it's just insecure sides of your ego, basically. The reason why your ego has these insecurities is because you are basically a rainbow. I mean, and so your ego has to work with something so beyond its own self that it's freaked out. It's like you're riding the roller coaster and your ego is still standing in line terrified of having to ride the roller coaster. So you see where you are in conjunction with your ego in conjunction with your body. I needed to talk about that too because now that we're able to access your ego and the insecurities, this is a big thing we need to work on. <clears throat> This is a friction. This is a friction. This again is bringing it down to, I don't want to do this. Ego's freaking out. I don't want to do the body. I You're going to have to move to some other body. I don't want you 
in this body. You're too much for me. So... I'm going to just have a conversation with Ego and I'm going to say, Ego, can you help me understand why you're having a hard time coping with this awesome spirit that is working with the, your awesome body? Like, can you help me understand? Ego says, I need... It's like, basically, I need help to cope. I need therapy. <laughs> and it's ego therapy. It's not conscious mind. It's ego therapy. It's like subconscious mind. It's, it's another part of your inner mind. When it tells me I need help, it shows me the brain is stacked. And it's got all these different layers of colors. And it's like a... <laughs> The princess in the pea story where there's like a mattress on 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 a mattress, on a mattress, on a mattress and then there's a tiny little pea underneath it all. So we know she's a princess if she can't get a good night's sleep because she could still feel that pea and ever something was off. <laughs> it wasn't all the mattresses. It was the pea. <laughs> but you have all these layers going on in here. And it's like unmade beds, disordered beds, uh, beds that aren't made. Your ego says this. I need help. Beds that aren't made. Beds that aren't made. And it shows me them all stacked on top of each other. That's how it's communicating its feelings to me is through this image, okay? We gotta work with it. And when I start to touch one of the beds and I actually remove the mattress, it's like it's being um, electrocuted. And it's all its muscles really, really jerked tight. Like, like super jerked tight and electrocuted. And I just say, breathe. Oh man, it's, it's breaking down. It's having a breakdown. I'm... Calming it down. Showing it a giant room where all the beds are made and they're all perfectly separated. Like a room with 16 beds, 8 on either side, perfectly made. That's freaking it out as well. It can't process that in its heart. It's, free, it's, it's freaking out right now. I say, tell me what it is about the image with the perfect beds that bothers you. What What is a detail that bothers you about that? Because if my life is in order, then I, now I have to know what to do with it. But if my life is in dis disorder, um, now I know that I just simply have to organize it. But there's just uh, too much to organize. It overwhelms me to think about it. But it also overwhelms me to think about everything being in order because now I have a new burden or stress as to what I'm going to do. I seem to, like, I'm supposed to know what to do. Say, just see that it's all in order and lay down in one of the beds and just zone out for a while. You don't have to do anything. You could take a year off from literally doing anything. You don't have to do anything. Wow, the, the ego in this picture never thought that it could lay down in one of the freshly made perfect beds. Like, you don't sit, lay down. It's like going to, I don't know, like a bed bath and beyond and laying down in the, in the bed while people walk past. And then you just fall asleep. Like, you don't do that. Like, you just don't do it. You look at it. You try to get comfortable with it. You just don't go all the way there for some reason. Maybe you do. But ego's like, you're not supposed to just get in the freshly, perfectly made bed. You just don't do it. <laughs> so it just, it messes everything up. It's like, just mess it up then. Say, sometimes you're gonna have to get in bed. 
and mess it up and then you're going to have to make the bed again or don't make the bed. You're going to have to live with your choices. A perfect bed isn't always the best choice because now you're going to have to unmake it and maybe you don't want to unmake the perfect bed every day. Only sometimes. It's just life. <laughs> Your ego shows me a really dirty man who just got like out of the coal mines, um, has like a foot long hot dog, like with way too much ketchup on it, <laughs> is in this perfectly made white bed and um, is just laying down, didn't um take the sheets down or anything, has dirty boots on and everything. And uh, so it's all black soot on the white. It isn't coming out in the wash. This ketchup dripping all over the place. He doesn't care. Uh, it's like it's wrong. It's just wrong. <laughs> See, just just let it happen. It's an event. It's an it's an event. The dirt got on the white, and it's not gonna wash out. So either you live with it or you replace it. You totally move on with your life. He can live with it. You don't have to. This is all about control. <laughs> ego feels responsible for making sure all the beds are made. And now what's ego supposed to do? Now what am I supposed to do? Why are they your beds again? Like why is everything your responsibility? Like literally everything is? And why does it have to be perfect? This is another clash. This has some other clash with that life. Because on some level, it would be to us like getting to put on a different, um, instead of putting a different outfit, you put on a different body. So to us, there's some kind of luxury glamour to it, but there's not the same mind mentality about it. It's actually for the purpose of experiencing that form. Um, there's a there's more of a balance to it. It doesn't have that kind of uh, ego associated with it. So that other life that you're still in is what it feels like with all the different bodies that you've chosen over who knows how many, how long. It's clashing still with this. You're still picking up on it. Because this conversation about perfection you're, you're working with human stuff here. You're not working with that other race. You're not working. That is different than what we have going on here. So human stuff is spilling the ketchup on the white. It's getting dirt on the perfectly white, perfectly made bed. It's messing things up. It's having to live in the mess. This, you see how this is starting to correlate to why you're kind of grossed out by having to choose the same body. And it's like eating rotten soup. It's like eat, a kid having to eat the broccoli or the black-eyed peas or something gross like that kids don't want to eat. <laughs> and it's like, it's so wronging to, to your being. <laughs> you have a, a very loud excitement for this reincarnation. However, there's a resistance to choosing this body. So we're bringing you into seeing the value of choosing this body and... It's because you get to take at your, at your age. You wanted to reincarnate at this age with this aged body. You wanted this level of maturity. You didn't want to incarnate in a baby form because you kind of like starting all over again. You wanted to choose a, um, like an incarnation, but to do it at the, this adult, in this adult body. So now your ego is looking at your adult body like this bed that has now gotten dirt on it, ketchup spilt. It's not perfectly made anymore. I Even if I perfectly made it, it's still got stains on it. I can't get the stains out. And it's just, again, it's the ego. It's In one version, everything is, is perfect exactly as it is. Because that's the truth. 
The other version of ego is just taking it way too sensitively. It's like having to put your clean foot into a dirty sock. It's like wrong. Do not put my clean, awesome soul into that unbalanced body. <laughs> it's like you will do it. I mean, that's what you want, right? See how I'm still working on energetically bringing that to you? Like, I am choosing this body. I'm okay with this body. This is a beautiful body. I couldn't ask for it to be any better than this. That's how good this is. So that is you choosing this body with the same delight that you are choosing this new life. Like, it's all together here. It's all solid. It's all just like, yeah, I'm with this. I'm together here. And also reconciling the parallel between that other life that still appears to be exist in existence. Um, you, you needed to know about that. I don't see the burnt anymore, this beautiful rainbow. It, it's kind of like a, a labradorite where you could look through it and see it's, it glows in different, different ways. And there's really intense red and orange now, green, blue, dark, um, like a dark blue, purple. Like it, it's, and there's yellow in here too. It's like all the rainbow and it glows from within and it, it's movable. It's not like um, burnt to some metal or something. You're feeling the excitement is authentically tuned into the physical body, which is authentically like there's an acceptance and authenticity and a connection between spirit and body that is extremely healthy and you needed that. And you don't need a burial for like this. Like that is that has come full circle. Everything feels very balanced now. This is a good. This is a very, 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 very healthy start to, to this extraordinary and next thing in your life. It's an event, you know. Like, you, it's almost like it deserves, like, a wedding or, like, it's a, an event. It deserves, like, a, a family reunion or something. Like, I don't know. It deserves a something. Like, to be in this, like, marriage with myself again. You know, like, there's some kind of, like, cherish the human side of this, too. Not just the spiritual side, the human side. It's, like, needs a human event, too, to, like, honor it. Like, a birthday celebration or a birthday cake or something. Um, to bring in more of the human element elements and to rejoice at the human side of this experience um but this definitely is going to this is this was excellent i'm so glad you pursued this with me you should notice yourself feeling more tuned into the physical i know it's not going to leave you with a lot of directions for what to do but simply to say i love this beautiful body and i'm choosing this body with my gifts and i'm ready to work with them awaken to them and then start you know putting some of these ideas into action you know because that's that's how you start to live in your dreams not just dreaming about them but actually participating in them creating them doing them you know all right thank you so much very wonderful experience today and for those of you watching if any of you are interested in exploring a psychic session with me please visit me at my website at abbynormalswisdomquest.com thank you all and have a beautiful day